Happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. In today's video, we'll be focusing on the weather pattern over the next week to 10 days with rainfall across the northern periphery of the heat and the extreme heat that continues to build across the southern plains. We'll get into all the details that you need to know in today's video. But before we get to the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel down below if you have not already. I cover all of North America, including southern Canada, the United States and the tropics on this channel so be sure to hit the subscribe button down below and also help me out in pressing the like button the thumbs up button down below the video the more likes we get the more information that this gets out to more and more people so I appreciate that as well so looking at the past 72 hours here the past few days across the United States as a whole with our rainfall accumulation you see where the active pattern has been across Wisconsin northern Illinois through the Great Lakes region especially here into southern lower Michigan Indiana Ohio into western Pennsylvania that's where we have a swath of some very heavy rainfall but then you also also see where it has been very uneventful with the heat building across portions of Texas, Oklahoma, southern Kansas into Arkansas, down here into Louisiana. We have barely seen a drop of rain over the past 72 hours in those areas. So that's where the real heat does continue. But before we get to that, let's zoom in here across the Great Lakes and show you the exact rainfall amounts that we have seen. And you see here portions of northern Illinois, southern Wisconsin here, really much of the state of Wisconsin seeing at least an inch or two of rain. The heaviest rains just here into far southwestern lower Michigan into far northern Indiana, over four inches reported there in a couple of those areas. Also a couple pockets of three to four inches in eastern Ohio as well. So definitely a big help to the drought out there that does continue across these areas. Unfortunately, we haven't seen much rain fall south and west of this line yet but that may change as we move forward so looking at the overall weather pattern zooming it out for you here today the big high pressure system controlling the heat across the southwest remains locked in place across the four corners and the southern plains where the maroon reds are that's where we see the triple digit heat as we go throughout today and then as we go into early on this work week on tuesday starting off the first day of august that heat center continues to push further off to the east and the center of high pressure is across North Texas, Oklahoma and southern Kansas with the triple digit heat maximizing across that area but the northeastern periphery of this area will start to light up with storms we'll get to that in just a moment but looking here at temperatures this afternoon we're back into triple digit land here across Kansas, Oklahoma and Texas 106 in the Dallas Fort Worth area, 106 to 107 there into Wichita Falls, 102 or 101 there from Oklahoma City to Tulsa and then on up there toward Wichita, Kansas. So it's going to be stifling hot this afternoon. That continues as we go into Monday. Remember the center of that ridge of high pressure does start to slowly drift east and then remain parked over North Texas. Oklahoma and Kansas as we go into early this work week. So 100 to 110 will be the name of the game from Kansas down through Oklahoma into Texas and even parts of western Louisiana going through Monday and then even into Tuesday we start to see that maybe peeling a little bit further south there away from northern Kansas with the active storms around the northeastern periphery of the ridge but we're up to 108 there on Tuesday in Dallas-Fort Worth 108 in Wichita Falls Falls, and then 104 to 105 is the name of the game from Tulsa down to Oklahoma City, the Lawton area as we go into Tuesday afternoon. So the heat is on. Make sure to stay hydrated. Make sure to find shade if you do work outside or even better yet, find an air conditioned room to cool off in. Definitely a big help out there, especially with this type of heat. But now let's look at the storm chances. Going all the way back to Friday, July 28th, we had a very significant MCS, a mesoscale convective system, push across the Midwest, east-southeast through the Ohio Valley and into the Mid-Atlantic. Lots of wind reports. You see that up to 446 wind reports here. Nine tornadoes reported on Friday. 79 hail reports. That makes for a total of 534 severe weather reports all told on Friday. And then 
all that did was just shift further south. So yesterday on Saturday, July 29th, that shifted the axis a little further south. We had another mesoscale convective system move through the mid-Missouri Valley down here through the Tennessee Valley, producing mainly damaging winds, but a couple tornadoes along the way as well. Four tornado reports from your Saturday, 405 wind reports, and we also saw a total of 422 severe weather reports all told from Saturday, yesterday. So it was another busy day yesterday, and as we go through early this week here, we're going to start to see more of that active pattern lighting up across those same zones. So the surface analysis here today, we have a warm front. South of that warm front, it's hot. Into Oklahoma, southern Kansas, Texas, it's hot south of that warm front temperatures surging well into the triple digits but right along that front and just ahead of the front we're going to see a lot of lift being maximized here for showers and storms and this is not going to be going anywhere through early this week on Tuesday. So this front's going to kind of act as a lifting mechanism for thunderstorms over the next 48 to 72 hours across this region. So as such, the severe weather outlook from the Storm Prediction Center today highlights a slight risk, a level 2 out of 5 in the yellow shade of color here from eastern Montana down into northeastern Wyoming, the western Dakotas and getting into northwestern portions of Nebraska with more of a marginal risk down here through the Arklatex regions and across portions of the southeast as we go through today. But the biggest concern today is the very large, if not the giant hail th uh, threat up here across the northern Rockies and the northwestern and Great Plains, where we could start to see hailstones up to two or even three inches in diameter, folks. That's hail, uh, that's hen egg size or larger. We could see up to baseball size hail at times up across this region with supercell thunderstorms later on this afternoon. So as we go through peak heating, this is around mid-afternoon. We're starting to bubble up some showers and storms across the northern Rockies, getting into the northwestern high plains here. But I think as we go into this evening, so we're talking 6, 7, 8 o'clock, around prime time, evening time here, that's where we're going to start to see more of these supercells developing with very large hail, if not the giant hailstones, two to three inches in diameter, and who knows, maybe even larger than that. We've seen a lot of hailstones bigger than that this season, so definitely watch out if you live in eastern portions of Montana, northeastern Wyoming, the western Dakotas, or northwestern Nebraska for that threat as we go through this evening. Otherwise, just some marginally strong to severe storms down here through the Arquitex and the southeast, wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour and maybe up to quarter size hail the tornado threat today is overwhelmingly low so we're not looking at a tornado outbreak or anything like that. Moving ahead to tomorrow, the last day in July, on Monday, July 31st, a couple areas we're keeping an eye on. Just a marginal threat for storms here down into southeastern Arizona. Then, then up here across the northwestern high plains, the western Dakotas again, down into western Nebraska, eastern Montana and Wyoming, and possibly as far south and west as the Denver region as we go through Monday. And then another marginal risk here near the Myrtle Beach area down to portions of Charleston, South Carolina, Savannah, Georgia, just some areas to note for some marginally strong storms on your Monday. And then right now on Tuesday, there's no risk for severe weather, but I do foresee possibly a marginal risk as we get closer being introduced by the Storm Prediction Center. Just noting that we have a lot of heat building to the south. There's probably going to be some type of marginal risk over the top of this somewhere across either the northern plains or through the Missouri Valley. So we'll continue to watch that as we get closer. But just as a rule, total rainfall accumulation now through Wednesday morning. This takes you through the middle of the week on August 2nd. You can see with the northwest flow here there will be areas that get up to two inches of rain or maybe three inches of rain and then there will be areas that don't get much rainfall. So a kind of a pick your poison type of weather pattern as we go through the middle of the week. Um, but if you get under those heavier rainfall amounts here, you could start to see more of the flash flooding start to occur, at least in isolated instances as we get through the middle of the week. So we will be watching out for that. But then looking at the weather pattern to close out the week, this is by Thursday the 3rd of August and you start to see the ridge begin to slowly break down from north to south here 
and become a little bit more flattened out by the next weekend. It's still going to be hot down here in the Lone Star State in Texas and then down across Dixie Alley here, but it's going to start to cool off, though, from north to south as we get towards the weekend. So looking at Thursday, it's still into the triple digits from the Ozarks in Missouri all the way south here toward the lower Mississippi Valley and the Southern Plains. We're back to 105 in Dallas. We're back to 104, 105 from Tulsa into Oklahoma City, 103 here in Little Rock as well on Thursday and then watch as we get into early on this next weekend here you can see on Saturday August 5th those triple digits start to drop further south and we start to see a nice reprieve this is probably a big cool down compared to what we've seen yeah it's still going to be 90 there in St. Louis 91 there in Wichita 96 there into Little Rock but this is a nice cool down compared to what the temperatures are like over the next few days across this region but we're still hanging on to 104 here in Dallas Fort Worth on Saturday so still seeing the triple digits across portions of North Texas and into Louisiana and central portions of Mississippi through next weekend regarding storm chances later on in the week you can see the jet stream at first by Thursday Friday will be more amplified with the active jet stream over the top here through the Ohio Valley but then it starts to flatten out from west to east this is what we call a zonal jet stream here right off the Pacific and moving across the country and into the western Atlantic Atlantic, that's a zonal jet stream by next weekend. And usually when you start to see that, the severe weather threat starts to lower and we start to see more rainfall moving further south. So looking at the EPS ensemble guidance, this is the European ensemble guidance showing the total of accumulated precipitation now through next Monday. This is on August the 7th and you start to see more of the rain taking over across the Dakotas, Nebraska, further south than we've seen it here into the southern portions of the Midwest through southern Iowa, Missouri, southern Southern Illinois, and then moving more to the southeast through the Carolinas and Georgia as we go through that time frame. But it largely remains dry across Texas, Oklahoma, and um, um, Louisiana as we go through that Monday, August 7th time frame. We could have some rainfall opportunities, but probably just some slight chances by then. And right now, with the slight chances of rain and not much rain coming over the next 7 to 10 days across Texas or the lower Mississippi Valley, there is a concern with the excessive heat, obviously, but also the drought starting to rapidly develop across East Texas, Louisiana, and maybe migrating further north into southern Arkansas as we enter into that second week in August. Now turning to the tropical weather update here to end the video, it does look like here a couple systems will have to watch a more likely scenario of a system developing well off the coast of the United States and curving out to sea here, and then another smaller system will have to watch potentially coming off the Carolina coast now that has a 20% chance of development over the next few days. And you can see both, both of those systems here on the visible satellite imagery. The system more likely to develop is right here across the North Atlantic over the open waters. And the other system is basically sheared out because of a frontal boundary moving off of the portions of the Carolinas. And you can see both these systems by tomorrow are well out to sea. And then by Thursday, both of these systems are gone away from the United States and over the well over the uh, North uh, Atlantic Ocean here. So we're not seeing a threat to tropics across anywhere in the North Atlantic. The Caribbean or the Gulf will continue to monitor that. We're also monitoring a system in the Eastern Pacific that has an 80% chance of development over the next seven days. This too will be mainly moving over the open waters here on Monday. We see this drop to around a 1,008, 1,009 millibar low pressure sy uh, system off the coast of Mexico. This pushes fast to the west. By Thursday, August 3rd, it's already pushing westward toward the Central Pacific and away from North America here. This may be a system we'll have to watch for Hawaii, but right now, with the cooler waters over those areas, I think this will quickly start to weaken and really only gains tropical depression or low-end tropical storm status. 
data. So we're not looking at any hurricane or anything like that from the Eastern Pacific whatsoever. But if you want additional weather forecast updates here on this channel, be sure to hit the description down below the video and the link is there for Twitter at HWeather420. I do update on that platform fairly frequently. I do appreciate everybody joining me here this morning. If you are not subscribed, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below as I cover all of North America, Southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics on this channel. I also would appreciate if you guys would press that thumbs up button down below the video. It really does help out more than you know to get this information out to as many people as possible. Otherwise, have a great rest of your weekend, folks, and I'll see you in the new update tomorrow.